Hi, I'm Agent Ford. Do you think you can help me solve another true crime mystery? The sophistication of technology has helped solve some of the most heinous crimes carried out in the past few decades. Innovations can now take advantage of DNA matches found on many crime scenes a lot better than it was possible in the past, making future criminals think twice before going ahead with their evil plans. The same DNA evidence has helped keep psychopaths and criminals behind bars for life. This was the case for the murder of Yara Gambarazio. In 2010, Yara Gambarazio, a 13-year-old girl, was on her way home from her gym class in Brimbate di Sopra, Italy, when she was abducted by an unknown man. After being severely injured by the man, she was killed and disposed of in an open field where her lifeless and decaying body was found three months later. After a lengthy investigation into this young girl's whereabouts, a certain man named Massimo Bozzetti was named the prime suspect in her case. The 46-year-old local construction worker was put on trial and later found guilty of murdering the young girl in cold blood and sentenced to life in prison. He also lost parental rights over his three children. During his trial, Massimo pleaded not guilty, but his DNA was found all over Yara Gambarazio's body, along with fiber residue from his van. This officially linked him to the murder of the young girl. This case began on November 25, 2010, when Yara was on her way home from the Brimbate di Sopra Sports Center in Italy. Although her home was 700 meters away, her parents knew the estimated time she usually took to get home. When she was significantly late, her parents decided to call the Carabinieri, the Italian police. Surprisingly, more than 100 volunteers were ready to help the Gambarazios search for their daughter. So a search was conducted through all the nooks and crannies of their home, down to the Brimbate de Sopra Sports Center. It wasn't until February 2011 that her body was found 10 kilometers away from the sports building. By the time her body was found, it was already heavily decomposed. However, multiple facial cuts and a significant injury over her forehead were still visible, which gave police the assumption that her killer must have used a sharp-edged weapon to inflict her pain before the murder. As of August 2011, autopsy results were yet to be released, but when the cause of death was delivered to the public, it was said to be the result of multiple blows to the head and falling on a hard object. Another autopsy assessment was issued to find any possible sign of sexual assault, but it was discovered that her assailant didn't sexually assault her. Before the arrest of Bossetti, another young man was arrested as a suspect in her case due to some comments he had made about her death, but he was soon let go after investigations revealed that he had no connection with the case. Meanwhile, Genetic evidence was taken from Yara's clothing and run in a DNA database of about 22,000 profiles. The search came back with a match to a young man who was then nicknamed Ignato One. It was later revealed that this alias was the one of Massimo Bossetti. His trial lasted for a long time and it wasn't until the year 2014 that he was found guilty of murdering Yara Gambarazio. His guilt wasn't proved by conduct, but based upon his DNA found all over Yara's body. Before Massimo was arrested, it was hard to officially name him the prime suspect because his late father, who passed away in 1999, also had his alias. It wasn't until his mother's DNA was assessed that it could be proved that one of her sons had committed the heinous crime. After investigators observed Massimo's recent activities, they requested he'd submit a breathalyzer test, which, unknowingly to him, gave authorities access to his DNA. By the time Bassetti was arrested, he claimed he was innocent and explained the DNA matches found on Yara, saying someone else had stolen some of his tools, specifically to kill the teenage girl. His wife supported these claims by also providing him with an alibi. This was refuted once the DNA profile of Yara's corpse was found to be original and authentic.
and couldn't have been transferred off of a tool. In January 2015, five years after Yara's murder, the DNA evidence found on her remains was rebutted by a scientific advisor who claimed that his mitochondrial DNA didn't match his nuclear DNA and that there might be some sort of error because of it. At this time, new speculations came about Sylvia Brenna, Yara Gambrazio's gym instructor, who allegedly knew something more about Yara's death. This was because some droplets of her blood were found on the shirt Yara had worn to the gym that day. She was called in for questioning, where she stated she knew nothing about the young girl's death. While investigators checked her cell phone records, it was found that she and her brother had a chat on the day she went missing, but those chat messages had been deleted from her phone. However, on June 1, 2016, Bozzetti was found guilty of murdering Yara Gambrazio and was sentenced to life imprisonment. In July of 2017, the verdict of his sentence was appealed but was later confirmed in 2018. In assessing why Bozzetti was able to quickly commit and get away with such a horrific murder, it was discovered that the neighbors of Bergamask Island in Milan were very quiet and tranquil. This made it possible for someone like Massimo Bozzetti to walk and act unnoticed. Random people on the streets around the vicinity of the sports complex had stated that they saw two men standing by a red car, speaking to Yara that day. But this couldn't be confirmed because of the lack of CCTV cameras in the area. During the initial interrogation, the police requested to speak to multiple of Gambarazio's family members to rule them out in her disappearance. Cell phones of many of the people in the vicinity were tapped to decipher if anything was connected to the case. The text messages of a certain Moroccan man were tagged as suspicious. He was allegedly in a hurry to leave the country, but upon investigating his phone calls and some suspicious blood samples found in his mattress, it was ruled out that he had something to do with the disappearance of Yara, but that it was related to the death of another victim. In the weeks that followed the search for Yara, despite pleads from her family, many news sources in Italy publicized her missing case, leading the family to fear that this could further prevent them from finding their daughter. It was a long time afterward that Massimo Bassetti was discovered and arrested. Yara's family could finally find some sort of peace in knowing that their daughter's killer had been brought to justice. What do you guys think about this case? Do you believe that DNA testing was enough to sentence Bossetti as her killer? Comment your thoughts below. I'll respond to as many as I can. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and share it with your fellow investigators. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you never miss a case. With that being said, stay safe, and I'll see you guys at the next crime scene.